Okay, so we've got a projectile motion question here where it's um, saying that pirate monkeys are in a boat are positioned at rest 100 metres from the base of a 40 metre high cliff. A cannon sits off the cliff and fires horizontally at the boat. What must the horizontal velocity of the cannonball be to hit the boat? All right. So we can let's put in the stuff that we know. We know that the boat is 100 metres away from the cliff. So let's write that one in. And so this is from there to the cliff. And the cannon is 40 metres high. Off the ground. Cool. So what must be the horizontal velocity of the cannonball to hit the boat? So basically what we need to do to find what the horizontal velocity of the cannonball needs to be is we have to work out to start with how long the cannonball is going to take to fall to the to well ground level where the boat is sitting. The reason we need to find that is because the horizontal velocity is going to be constant the whole time. So if we can work out how long it's going to take to hit the ground or the water, we can work out how fast it's going to be going to get from here to here, 100 metres. So we're trying to, again, we're trying to find T. Now, the formula we're going to use to find T, we're going to use one of the equations of motion, S equals ut plus one half at squared. Now, what we know is we know that the acceleration is 9.8 meters a second. We know that the initial vertical velocity is going to be zero, so that's going to zero out all this, and we know that the distance is 40 meters. So we substitute everything in we know. Zero, 40 is equal to zero times t plus one half of 9.8 t squared. Great. So what happens is obviously this cancels out because zero times anything is still zero and a half of 9.8 is going to be 4.9. So to get the t squared by itself we're going to go t squared is equal to 40 divided by 4.9. So therefore, t has to equal the square root of 40 divided by 4.9. Cool, which is equal to 2.86 seconds. So, if we know that it's going to take 2.86 seconds for the cannonball to come out of the cannon and then hit the water below, we know that it has to be able to travel 100 metres in 2.86 seconds. So if we're traveling 100 meters in 2.86 seconds, we can use one of the simple equations of motion and go, we know that the velocity is going to be equal to, and we can use this average velocity equation because the horizontal velocity, if we negate wind resistance or air resistance, doesn't change. So the velocity is equal to just the distance we travel divided by the time which it takes to travel it. So this is going to be 100 metres in 2.86 seconds. So 100 divided by 2.86 is 34.97 metres per second to the negative 1. Great. So that's our answer for A. Cool. So 
Moving on to B. So the B asks us, what is the velocity of the cannonball at the instant before it hits the boat? Okay. Well, we're going to have, we'll start B over here. B. So, what we have is we're going to have two components to our uh, final velocity. We're going to have the horizontal component, which is like this. And we're going to have our vertical component, which is like that. And they're going to join up to make a resultant velocity like that. So what we can do is we already know, because our horizontal velocity is constant, we already know that this is going to be 34.97 meters per second. So we have to work out this vertical velocity ve vector here. So the way we're going to use, work that out is we're going to use another one of our basic equations of motion. V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. So why am I doing using this one? I really like this formula because like the, the formula before, U is going to be zero. So that the half of the equation just disappears. So we can go v squared is equal to 0 squared plus 2 times 9.8 times the distance which it has to accelerate over, 40. Great. So what we then work out is 2 times 9.8 times 40 is 784. So velocity in the vertical direction is equal to the square root of 784, which is equal to 28 meters per second to the negative 1. Great, so let's write that in. Cool. So now that we have both components of our final velocity, we can work out the resultant vector. So the resultant velocity. And that's going to be found, the VR is going to be found using just simple Pythagoras. It's going to be the square root of 34.97 squared plus 28 squared. And that gives us a grand total of VR is equal to 44.8 meters per second to the negative 1. Great. So that's part of the answer to this question. Now, a lot of people make the mistake of just leaving it there, but hopefully you know, you'll realize that velocity is a vector quantity, so we need a direction as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to determine what this angle is here so we can give this velocity vector a direction. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use a little bit of basic trigonometry and we're going to write, well, theta, we're going to use the opposite side and the adjacent side, and we're going to say theta is equal to the inverse of tan of opposite, which is 28, over the adjacent, which is 34.97, and that equals 38.68 degrees. So we can say that 
What is the velocity of the cannonball at the instant before it hits the boat? It's going to be 44.8 meters a second at at 39 degrees to the horizontal. Full stop. So that will be your complete answer to this. Great. So, part C. Consider the boat, so this one here, moving at a constant speed of 5 metres a second towards the cliff. Okay, so now what we have is they've introduced a vector going uh, this way of 5 metres a second. So, what velocity must the cannonball be fired to hit the boat? The cannon is fired when the boat is at 100 metres away. Okay, so the, the boat is closing on the cliff from 100 metres. Now, this is on the surface a relatively tricky question, but once you realise that the cannonball at 40 metres off the ground, if it's going to be fired horizontally, it's always going to take... 2.86 seconds to hit the ground. So what we have to, what we're going to do, is we're going to work out how far the boat, the pirate ship, is from the cliff after 2.86 seconds. So we can go. The distance from the cliff is going to be equal to 100 minus 5 times the time that the boat is travelling towards the cliff. So that's going to be equal to 100 minus 5 times, in this case, 2.86, which is equal to 85.7 metres. So, how fast does the cannonball need to be fired? Well, we know that it has to cover 85.7 metres in 2.86 seconds. So like we did up here, we're going to use the same formula. So I'll put a comma. So the velocity is going to have to be equal to the distance over the time, which is 85.7 divided by the time, 2.86. So that, when if we divide those by each other, we get 29.96 metres a second, or that's approximately equal to 30 metres a second to the next one. So that was part C down the bottom. So let me separate this. So you can see that these projectile motion questions, the hardest part I would say would be picking the formulas that you need to use. However, what we always need to appreciate is that the velocity in the horizontal direction is constant. It's always fixed. So the velocity in the horizontal is fixed and the acceleration in the vertical is always fixed. So if we understand that, we can figure out using your basic equations of motion toolbox that you can just figure out the equations that fit. But I would say that these, knowing intuitively where which equations go where, it only comes with practice. So the more of these you do, the better. And I hope this particular problem that I solved helped. And I'll see you again next time.